uh, position now. And in this uh, case, uh, we're going to use pillows for support on our OR bed. Uh, we're going to have two, one that's going to be around the chest area and one that's going to be underneath the lower legs. For her face, we're going to use um, this foam crate. There's other things that we could use. We could use um, this type of device, whatever will uh, work the best for your patient. Now, our patient today is going to have an IV in, and our patient has a Foley catheter in. And what the first thing we want to do is to bring our stretcher in and lower the side rail, butt up the bed so that they're pretty equal in height, and then we want to put the lock on the stretcher, and we want the OR bed to also be locked. And so Fong's going to come over and check the OR bed. And uh, Randy, I'm going to have you be uh, my anesthetist today. And ideally, a supine to prone um, would be would require six people, two on one side, two on the other, one at the feet, and then anesthesia at the head. And the prone position can be used for a number of procedures. We can do a laminectomy procedure. We could do something on the thigh. We could do something in uh, buttocks, anus procedure, the Achilles tendon, uh, a lot of different procedures in that position. Now, um, the one thing that we need to take into consideration is that the patient will most likely, if they're having a general anesthetic, of course, be put to sleep on the stretcher before they get moved to the operating room table. And so that being the case, the big thing is that we have to worry about our patient's airway. They'll have an endotracheal tube in, and we want to uh, let anesthesia give us the go-ahead when it's okay to move, and they'll have to disconnect the endotracheal tube and then we would roll. So we don't want to disconnect it too soon. We want to disconnect it right before we're going to roll. And so um, we have this side rail down. We have that side rail down. We have both beds locked. And so now what we want to do is we want to figure out where we want our IV and where we want our Foley catheter. So you have to take into consideration that she's going to be moving this way and her IV is in her right arm. So it's going to end up on that side. So what I don't want to do is to put the IV across my patient's chest because she's going to end up laying on it. So I'm going to want this like this. And then we want to put this on an IV pole. So Randy, I'll have you put it in. Here's another thing you want to work. You don't want to get this all wrapped around. Make sure that that is free. Now, um, this is uh, stuck on this stretcher, so unfortunately we're not going to be able to lower that, but we would want to lower this IV pole so our anesthetist has clear sail sailing over there. Now our Foley catheter we have to think about too because she's going to be rolling over, and so we're going to want to have that detached from the stretcher and put onto the OR bed. Now, you have to think about this. This is going to end up over here. Her leg is going to come over. So we're going to put it on this bed right now. Now, be careful. Here's what happens. This falls down and it gets caught. So you always want to know where that is. And we don't want to have it underneath her leg. We want to have it just like that. Okay. Now, um, we could have used chest rolls. And we can make our own. We can take a bath blanket and, and we can roll up a bath blanket and use two chest rolls, one on either side. Or we could use uh, a pillow if we wanted. We could roll up a pillow and we could tape it and we could do that. Or um, they make chest rolls that are made out of gel. So that, that works really well too. And a lot of it might be dependent upon your patient's size. Um, what is wrong with them, the condition, any, all sorts of numbers of things. Now with her, because you know we have a student here, obviously if we had a patient, she wouldn't have jewelry on, because you can see how that's going to be, that could be a problem and could, could get caught. And, um, <laughs> nice job. And we don't, we don't want to have any jewelry on either, because we don't want to scratch the patient. 
And so the first thing that we're going to do, our bed is locked, our Foley catheter has been taken care of, our IV looks pretty good. We've got both pillows ready to go there, and we might have to readjust them. And so what we would do then is we would need to remove this blanket. Now, um, we're going to have two on that side, two there, and Emily here. Now, Emily, you're going to cross your hands and go underneath her ankles. Other way. This one on top. Yeah, yeah, that one. Okay. Now, remember, our patient's going to have gone to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, Randy would have a blood pressure cuff on her and an oxygen saturation and the EKG and, and whatever. And so then we would put her to sleep and an endotracheal tube would be put down. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take the draw sheet. You guys are going to take this and Jeremy and I are going to take this and we're just going to get her to the edge. And Randy's going to watch her shoulders and her head. And so she's asleep now and so we're going to just do a straight lift just to the edge. There. Okay, now we no longer want to use the draw sheet. So you guys are going to just tuck that draw sheet down by the side. Now how are we doing with the catheter there and the IV, what do you think? All right. So now what we're going to do is Jeremy's going to hold her hand to her hip, and I'm going to hold her elbow here. Can you see that? And you guys are going to do the same. Hold a hand and a wrist and a kind of an elbow and a shoulder. Okay, now we're going to just roll her on three, but anesthesia is going to disconnect the oxygen hose from the endotracheal tube. And so we're going to say, Randy, are you ready to go here? Yes. All right, on three. One, two, three. You guys are going to catch her. Okay, now we've got to get this bed out right away. Unlock it. There you go. Now, and we don't have any cords caught on anything, do we? No. Okay, so the very first thing we want to worry about at this point is that she is reconnected to the endotracheal tube. How is your head? Okay. <laughs> Not comfy. No. Okay, and see this IV now? It's kind of wrapped around. So we're going to get it over on this side. And we've got the pillow here. I think that she could use another pillow. So if we had another pillow, we would put a... Um, Another pillow here so her feet aren't crunched into the bed. And now what about our Foley? Let's find out about our Foley. Our Foley catheter, we hooked up to the bed here, and we know that anesthesia likes to see it. So we would make sure that it was free and not caught on anything, and underneath her leg, and we would bring it up to the head of the bed. Now, the toes we wouldn't want crunched in there. Lastly, what we need to do is um, we're going to put arm boards on, and we're going to bring her arms out to the head of the bed. So we're going to in a minute, but we're going to get arm boards. So, Fong, you can take that arm board and just put it on straight, and then can you get it. And this is kind of difficult to do. No, that goes. There, no, no. That tilt back. it up, yep, tilt, tilt it way, way up, yeah. so this lift catches the bed. There you go, way up, way up, way up, there. Now bring it down, it's got to like catch it. I don't understand how this is You guys got to practice this too, because these are hard, and, and um, this you have to have back, and you have to come way down, way over, and catch it, and then test it. Now what we want to do is slide it down some, because we want this to end up like this. You get it? Did you get it? Looks like you did. Always test it. All right, and now bring that. Let's put the Foley down. And bring it up to the head now. Good. Okay, now what we're gonna do, how you doing, Sylvie? What we're gonna do is bring her arms up. And we put this back up on there. Just no, we would put it down there. Okay. So what we're going to do is take her wrist and her elbow and carefully bend like this, and bring her arm around. And we would probably like to have a towel down on here, 
like one of our blue towels, and bring that arm up, and let's see where our IV is, if it's not tangled. And now, uh, what we would do is we would check our patient's face, ears, nose. We would make sure that breasts aren't um, getting uh, caught and pinched and uh, genital areas and um, toes are okay, our foley is okay, our IV is okay. So lastly, we can put a blanket on them and then we will put the safety strap across her thighs. And where did that go? Is it on the bed? There. So the safety strap then would get attached to the bed and we would make sure it's not too tight. And then if we were doing back surgery, when we get our prep ready, we could lower this and then prep her back or her ankle for Achilles tendon surgery or whatever. Now to get her back from prone to supine, it's kind of just in the reverse order. The first thing we need to do is to take the safety strap off. We need to take the blanket off. We need to get both arms back. So we would take her elbow and her shoulder and make sure we don't hyperextend anything and put her hand back at her side without breaking anything. <laughs> now we have to take these both off because you can't get the um, bed in without doing that. Okay, now where is our foley? So we want to take our foley that was up at the head of the bed and we want to bring that back and we could take this out for now and we want to make sure that this gets taken with us. So for now what I'm going to do is put it here and now let's butt up the stretcher. I always make sure somebody's staying with her so whoever goes out to the in the hall to get the bed, somebody should be with her. And what do we have to do to our beds? Bump them. And lock them. Yeah. Is it locked? Yeah. Is it locked? No. No. <laughs> uh, here. Oh. All right. Good for Jaren. Now, um, this, you know, look at this. See how this is? Can you zoom in on this? Look at This is exactly the kind of stuff that happens. Uh, IV gets caught around the patient's finger. Who knows? But I'm going to tell you this cord business is a nightmare for us sometimes. And this is just one IV and one Foley. Sometimes patients have drains. They might have three or four IV lines, any number of things. So what we want to do at this point now is to think about she's going to go back this way. So we want to take this IV and we don't want to go across her back because she's going to end up laying on it. So we'll just go like this. We'll hang it on our stretcher. Our catheter now is going to end up over here, right? So we'll put that on the bed, but I want to make sure that this doesn't drop down and get caught either. And now again, ideally, six people. So we're going to get somebody to take her feet, right, yep, underneath her ankles, you want to get in here, and Kong will be our anesthetist this time, and he's going to kind of watch her head when she comes, and this is going to be, you can see, this is kind of a problem here, so try to work around that, and now, Sylvie, something's not right here, I think we broke your arm, Sylvie, all right, Hold her hand and her wrist to her side, and you hold her elbow and shoulder, kind of. And um, with this, we're always, we're not really using a draw sheet ever to do this. We're always just rolling them. Yeah, we don't want that to go over her, so we want it to be, stay like this. But um, we could use a lift sheet to get her to the edge, but that's, that's the extent of what we do. So we're going to just roll her on three. One, two, three. Jeremy and Emma, no, keep your hands there. You're catching her. Keep your hand there. You want it. Okay. I'm just going to put one hand on the other. Yeah. Kind of got it. Okay. Now, you guys got to see your arms needed to be underneath her because yeah, you that. guys need to kind of pull her over. And Sylvie's little. But imagine doing this with a 280 pound person or something and your hands get just stuck underneath them. So and that's why. 
<laughs> That's why you don't want to have um, jewelry on or anything, because you're gonna you're gonna hurt yourself and you're gonna hurt uh, the patient too. You could gouge them, or I I I did it once with a ring on. Honestly, it was a big mistake. I don't know what I was thinking, and I was bleeding and everything. So. Um, and then we would put the blanket on her and put the side rails up and off to recovery she would go. She would get extubated and off to recovery she'd go. So that is prone, supine to prone and back.